Uh, I'm Daniel. Uh, I'm head of engineering at the, the very same company you're sitting in uh, right now. Um, and I worked at various other companies before doing WebRTC. This talk is going to be about um, WebRTC and video. How many of you guys have actually used WebRTC? Just out of curiosity. One. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. Super we'll cool. So basics. hopefully this is going to be interesting for you guys. WebRTC stands for uh, for uh, real-time communication on the web. But still, we'll talk more about that. Um, maybe a couple of, I mean, you guys are familiar with the office now more or less now, but a couple of um, couple of things, uh, toilets over there, Wi-Fi, you know, all the things. If anything you need, just come talk to us. But uh, let's get... Uh, the next slide where Vasil can introduce himself. Yeah, uh, and hi everyone. My name is Vasil and I'm the front-end guy here at 23. So doing like mainly front-end, touching a bit the betting, but that that's me. Um, yes. Yeah, a couple of things about who we are and what we do. A lot of people have asked today. Um, we just turn to the next one. So 23 is a video marketing platform, uh, which is basically consists of kind of four main pillars, the three main pillars. Uh, on this slide, we do everything around video. So everything around social, we distribute your videos. If you come to us as a company, to all the social channels, and we grab the analytics from those channels, put them into sort of the platform, and there's a lot of big points sort of, we provide data to companies, right? About who uses your videos, kind of tracking all those potential leads, right? How do they convert? So, you know, if you used to doing that with Google Analytics on your homepage, why would you miss all the data that's coming through the videos, right? I mean, a lot of people watch the videos and you don't you don't know anything about them, right? So we provide that data and we have a lot of infrastructure historically uh, to work with videos both on demand and live. So we have live streaming, we have, you know, cross-browser players, um, distribution, CDNs, collectors, you name it. A, a lot of things around video. So these are kind of the main three things and we've, um, you know, We've been kind of missing the fourth part, and the founders who still work here, they kind of came up with this idea of like, we need something something more, something is missing there, right? And um, I turn to the next slide. Um, and they were like, we need webinars. So um, this is, uh, and we need webinars that work kind of in the browser, right? And uh, I have done some of this stuff before. Um, we came along here and I was like, oh, that's amazing. Let's build this stuff. And if you switch to next, uh, we'll keep it fast paced. We're like, that's let's look me. look what's out there, right? And <laughs> we're like, okay, there's go to meeting and go to webinars, right? And I worked for Citrix before, actually, who produces go to meeting, and that's about the amount of developers working on go to meeting. It's around 200 something people, right? Amazing uh, piece of software, been around for many years. And then look at the other competitors, Zoom, right? They have 40 million of financing around they receive <clears throat> for their video technologies, like super cool. And then we're like, okay, we're four people, right? We we're going to build something. Um, <laughs> that's what they usually look like, these tools. Like some of them try to emulate an operating system in your browser with the dock and everything and Windows you can move around. Um, it's a pretty old, you know, old fashioned software. Um, so some of them do, for that matter, you can open the go to opener, which is also super cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's, let's move on to the next one. And uh, so, the founders had this vision, like we want to build a webinar tool that runs from the browser. It doesn't require any plugins, downloads, all, all the software does that. At the moment, that's that's competitors, almost all of them, right? And um, we also want to support sort of all these companies we have who even use a lot of old browsers, right? So video platform supports like up to down to IE7 with Flash and all that stuff. You, you might be wondering how many big codes are still there using that. Um, Essentially, like we wanted all these cool features, screen sharing and video playback and um, kind of remote speakers connecting into the things from all around the world that way you can moderate between them. Um, so we, we said like, yeah, let's build this thing. And uh, obviously an obvious choice if we want stuff, video stuff in the browser that's real time is WebRTC, right? Uh, technology that Vasil is going to give you an intro to and tell you a little bit on how to use that stuff. Yeah. So guys, let me let me just uh, kind of make a short intro for this WebRTC so it can get some idea like what's the technology behind, like what stands for and stuff like that. So WebRTC is an uh, open source project that uh, provides uh, browsers and mobile applications with real-time communications uh, uh, capabilities via simple API. Um, so there are like two important bits here that you need to remember. The first one is 
web. That's because we like web and where we feel so very comfortable working. And when Zoe finds us, then she's going to tell us where is the web so we can kind of use it. And RTC is the, the real time communication because nowadays, come on, everything is real time. Yes, you press the button, you want to see it on the screen, you want the person who stands on the other end of the application to also see your change in mid. So everything is real time. So that's, that's what uh, WebRTC. I'll give you just a few use cases here so you can kind of get some idea uh, and, and, and can relate WebRTC to something that you maybe know. Uh, the first use case of, web, uh, web, of WebRTC is video calls. Um, video calls these days are most of them are on the web and they're real time, of course, because you're like on, uh, showing on, on, the, on the application, the other person on the other side sees immediately what you're doing. Um, so we can use WebRTC for video calls, which kind of makes the video calls like more secure, enhances uh, performance, video quality, um, more reliable as well. And so one use case that is kind of very uh, familiar, popular like these days is um, appear in. Who doesn't know appear in, which is called now whereby? Okay, just a few people here. But so appear in is like a, well, it's a browser-based application that you can open and have like a conference uh, with another person, just like one-to-one -one, uh, uh, connection. Uh, very easy with few clicks in the browser, and they use WebRTC. Like if uh, you should try it, probably like it's it's, it's a really cool one. Um, also, WebRTC can be used for peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer messaging and content sharing for uh, exchanging data between uh, between peers, like in real time, uh, real time fashion, of course, like in a very secure manner, which is the the, the advantage. And also, uh, it can be used for communication between Internet of uh, Devices, uh, IoT devices these days, which is also very popular. So let's look at the browser support. As you can see, the browser support is decent. Um, because uh, WebRTC was developed by Google, they also developed a library which is called um, Adapter.js. Adapter yes, the Adapter.js library uh, compensate the frictions between the WebRTC implementations in different browsers. For example, uh, Firefox has one implementation of uh, WebRTC, Chrome has another one. But Adapter.js makes that friction, uh, kind of removes that friction, so this kind of uh, unified across browsers. And the funny part here is that, as you can see, it's not supported by Internet Explorer, but if you add some additional uh, libraries and plugins, then you can make also WebRTC running on Internet Explorer, just for the fun. I mean, I guess nobody is doing it, but why not? So, um, okay, we, Daniel talked about webinar and like webinar tool. So let's uh, take a look at like what is really needed if you want to make a webinar tool or like a conference tool. It doesn't matter, like something that you exchange video in real time. The first uh, required bit is uh, implementing singling between peers. That means uh, you need a way to exchange uh, like admin data between the, the two sites. So to make them talk between each other. So this is the kind of the first bit is the singling. After that, uh, implementing peer discovery. That means, okay, I'll jump on application and jump on the internet. Then the other side should know that I'm there and I'm waving like, hey, come on, I'm here. You can discover me because then we can connect, right? So it should be peer discovery. Um, the third bit here is uh, building browser device handling. Uh, that pre pretty much means we have a browser, we have a webcam, so let's make the webcam record us uh, and send it through the, through the net to the other side so they can see what we are doing. That's the device handling. And we have the, the last piece here is understanding connectivity and networking, which is like very much IP related and exchanging data between IP addresses. And like this is more a bit complicated stuff, but it's, it's a requirement. Um, and here are like few important uh, important parts about WebRTC. Like uh, we as a JavaScript developers, we kind of should know them if you want to use WebRTC. Like the first bit here is like get user media, which um, is used to get the, the video stream from your camera and uh, you, you can display it on the screen or you can record it or you can send it like, but that's kind of the, the, first, the first part. The second part here is um, RTC peer connection. Uh, which represents the connection between two peers, either like you as a local host and like a remote host or just two remote hosts. And uh, the last bit is the RTC ch uh, data channel, uh, which sends actually the data between the, the peers. So this is pretty much kind of the basics of WebRTC and uh, what stands for. So now it's uh, just like uh, demo time. And I hope the demo gods are with me today. And we'll see that. Um, okay, so let me sh first uh, tell you what's going to be the demo about um, and what we have here uh, on the this side over here. So what we're going to try to do actually, we talked about the webinar too and like how we're going to take the, the stream that's come from your camera and show it to the user that okay, you can see yourself and after that we can record that bit and send it. So what we're going to do with this demo here is just try to get the stream that comes from the camera 
and show it on the screen. So this is kind of really the first step if you want to do something with Web WebRTC. And uh, what we have here on, uh, on the HTML side, uh, the, the important part here, I guess, is this video element uh, where we're going to feed the stream that comes from our camera to the video element. And that video element is going to show us like what's, what the camera sees. Um, and on the, the right hand side, I have like a bit of JavaScript, something that we're going to click here, a button later that says start camera. And hopefully when we start the camera, then in this green box over here, then we're going to see actually uh, like what the camera, what the camera gives us. So the first part uh, is going to be, let's take the video element. Const video, that's going to be get element by ID. It's going to be code video. That's going to run fine, I guess, but we'll try that. And we're going to take the stream. So the stream from the camera, we can, we can pull it from the navigator object. Like that, and we need the media devices. Um, media device, it's actually code. And after that, we, get, we need the get uh, user media. And in here, it's a function that takes like uh, what you want to take from the user media, either like video, audio, or both of them, and you can specify some properties and stuff. But we go like simple and just take the video. We say video true like that and the the video element over here the constant uh, it's like the video element that we target it on the page on the on the left hand side in the html and it has a property which is called source object and we can feed the stream into it so the the get user media returns a media uh, it's a, it returns a media stream that stream we can feed into the video video tag on the page right and that's going to show us like what's what's in there yeah. It's called uh, caveat. It's an asynchronous function, so you need to actually wait for the stream. To That's actually there. true, I, which I forgot. Yes. But That's why actually we have the async in front, and we can just await for it and feed it later. So. That's good. Catch, thank you. Let's see that now. If the if the demo gods are here, doesn't seem so. Get element by ID video, media device. <laughs> Not today, it seems. Source object stream. That's really what should be like, yeah. The video, the, the demo gods are never here, but. Uh, it's devices. It's devices. Yeah, could be one of these small things. And now, woo! Yay! There you go. <laughs> yeah, typos here and there, but when you're in a, a live coding, then Just it happens. Just a round right? of applause. It's pretty tough to do. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's tough as writing three lines of code. <laughs> it's like you can get the, the stream from the, your camera and present it like to the user. The next bit, I guess, is just like recording this and sending it over the the wire to to the other side. But this is really like the the basics and the, like the very very first thing that you need to learn about WebRTC is how to get the user media. And you know you should remember that is navigator dot media devices. <laughs> Not device. Uh, cool. So that was uh, the first demo I. I had. Uh, let's take a look on the next one. So I want to show you some a bit more uh, cool stuff that you can do with uh, WebRTC and mixing actually the stream that comes from the video with, with some filters, with CSS, or like all kind of magic that you can do. And what we have here, it's kind of another demo that is using a library which is called Istacam, istacam.js. And what it does, it takes the stream from uh, from the from the video element and mix it through uh, through CSS filters and kind of present it on a canvas element on the page. So wh what is required here is to have a canvas element on the page that you can actually, the stream that comes from Instacam, you're going to fit into that canvas element. And the video that is shown on the canvas is going to be like the video that is taken from your camera, but mixed through some filters that you can apply, all kind of funny stuff that you can do, and you're going to see it. And that's kind of a thing that you can 
you know, uh, make your video like more funny or more interesting in a way that if, if you want to do so. So what you have here, we have the, the Insta, uh, Instacam libraries already installed, as you can see, like through the CDN. And uh, what we need to do is first to get the canvas. So on the page, we have a canvas element, which uh, it's somewhere here, I guess. Yes, we have a canvas element, as you can see here on the left hand side. So we're going to do the same exercise. which is canvas. And we're going to create a new instance, which is gonna, we're going to assign to camera straight away, which is written camera like that. And now Instacam. So it takes two parameters. The first one is the canvas element. So we're just going to feed the canvas over here. And the second parameter is Yes, like that. And the second parameter is like a configuration option. So we need to provide the width of the canvas and the height. We need to provide two filters that we actually cannot see here, but we have like two filters that we want to uh, we want to apply to our uh, video element. That's blur and sepia. So we're just gonna say that their initial values for blur is gonna be zero. I just pressed the wrong key. And for sepia, it's going to be zero again. So let's see if that's going to work again. It doesn't seem so. I'm sorry? Let's try that. Now. OK, now it's taking the camera. That's good. And what we will do, we will try to apply these filters. Like uh, we have like some simple JavaScript that pretty much takes the value from these uh, two inputs over here, like blur and, and sepia, and that should be applied to the video. So as you can see, like, yeah, it's pretty much applying it. So it takes the stream from the, from the camera and applies filters on top of it. So we can really go crazy and do like, if like this kind of videos where everything is like in a sepia color. And this is just for the fun. I mean, you can find also some good use case for it, but uh, it's like everything is possible, right? Just you have a video stream, you have canvas, and you can draw anything on the canvas. And after that, take it and, and send it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, OK. I just need to go quickly back to where we were. Mm, that's. OK, and now we are at this part again. So Daniel. Now, now to the boring part. So uh, networking, maybe some of you are excited about networking. It's kind of another part of, of building a web conferencing tool, right? One is obviously dealing with all your video devices and audio devices and screen as an input, right? Another one is actually how do you connect two browsers peer to peer to each other? And this already mentioned some of these techniques, right? There is Basically, you need to discover each other, right? You're in the same room somehow, right? You find each other, then you connect to each other. So usually that involves a couple of things. Um, one is sort of negotiation phase where you exchange like capabilities, they're called, right? Basically, like if Vasil and I want to connect to each other, I will tell him like what resolution do I support? What codecs do I support in my browser and things like that? Or well, it could be a device, right, for that matter. Um, and then he'll send his requests back and then we'll kind of negotiate what is what is, we support both, so how can we connect to each other? Um, then even before that happens, there is a phase for basically discovering each other, which is called the ICE kind of uh, protocol, which stands for Interactive Connection Establishment, I believe. Um, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit, in, sort of in a high face, high pace about uh, how that works, right? So uh, it's useful to understand if you want to build those kind of applications. Um, so essentially, you all know about NAT, right? That's a big problem if you have a firewall or if you have a router that can block incoming connections, right? So WebRTC has a, a technology, let me show on the next slide, uh, on how to kind of establish a connection nonetheless, right? And, uh, and there are different cases we have here. I won't go too much into details, but obviously, if you're in a local network, both computers are connected to the same one. Uh, it's pretty easy, right? You, you just... Uh, discover each other's local addresses, right? Through some sort of signaling system, right? Which could be, you know, 
real time server, uh, your API, Firebase, you name it, right? Any yeah. any kind of signaling system where you can real time exchange JSON objects essentially, right? Or strings between each other. So real like on local network, it's pretty easy, right? You discover each other's sort of IP addresses, local IP addresses, and then you usually have no problems connecting to each other um, on various ports. Um, if you're on the internet, it's a bit more complicated, right? You have different strategies to find each other. One of them is essentially to find out your public IP address, right? You can use this so-called stun server. They are available freely from Google, for example, which is super simple piece of software, like really simple web server that just pings back your, your IP address that you request from. So if you request you know, from this computer, it will receive the request, the respond request and respond with your IP address. So as when you talk through the NAT, you know your public IP address. That's how you figure out what is my public IP address, right? And as for signaling, you tell the other party, hey, this is my public address, it will tell you yours, and then you can connect, super cool, super easy. Next uh, setup is what if you are actually running behind a firewall, right? That blocks all the incoming connections. Your customers are gonna have a problem, right? And for them, for that case, uh, we have a concept called turn, which are servers that relay all your media, right? So usually you would put IP addresses of the servers in your setup, in your RTC peer connection. And then if this guy blocks my incoming connections, then I'll just connect to the server and he'll connect to the server. And then we'll uh, essentially, like you don't need the incoming from the other side, right? You yeah. both connect to the same server and you can talk to each other. Pretty expensive piece of software if you pay for traffic, but uh, <laughs> that's kind of the, <laughs> the price to pay, right? And then there are other setups. I'll, I'll go, don't go too much into the, those details, right? That let you actually discover, discover each other. So this is all handled for you. It's nice to understand, but essentially the browser will do it for you. It implements this ICE protocol. Um, and essentially, essentially, it will like figure out what are all my candidates are called, all these IP addresses you can figure on different network um, setups, and then it will try them all out and see which is the fastest one actually, right? To, so it can establish a connection, and then once it's done that, it will essentially exchange descriptions, right? What what are my capabilities? As we talked before, like I can do 640 by 480, Vasil can do yeah. 59. Great, let's connect. Um, <laughs> Okay, next slide. Uh, this is what an SDP package usually looks like, or SDP description, right? Has like IP addresses and a lot of other stuff. Um, not so important, uh, just so you see it. Uh, this is probably can be skipped. Cool you time. don't want to build it today, right? But uh, we'll still show you more more practical stuff. Uh, want to go over the, the yeah the details yeah. of this sure. implementation? Uh, so. This is basically all it takes to build kind of a conferencing tool, right? All you've seen now, these all these establishments of connections um, is not that much code actually because the browser will do all this stuff for you. So here we have an example which has a local video and a remote video. Usually that would run on two different computers, right? For the, so we can illustrate it here. It runs on the same machine. Um, but essentially, this is your machine A, this is your machine B actually receiving signal from from your yeah. webcam, right? So the main function does basically four different things, right? So you have this RTC peer connection interface, which essentially represents a connection between two peers. And we have two of them because we're just playing the sending part and the receiving part of the second PC, here, right? Of peer connection. Um, so for the sender side, we just need to basically get the media. You've seen the demo now with get user media. This is what this function does. Internally, you can look at this example maybe above um, later. Um, and then you create a so-called offer, right? So this is basically my SDP. And if you put the stream in there, right? From, from your get user media. So you're like, okay, I'll create an offer. And then you use signaling. It's not implemented here since we're on the same machine. You would send it over through whatever API or signal channel to the other side. This guy will receive it. This is basically the other side, right? It will uh, receive the offer. And it will uh, you apply the offer and you create an answer which is sent back to to site A, right? Uh, Bob and Alice, I guess, are the usual terms you would probably <laughs> use for them, as well as Vasil in this case, but it's okay too. <laughs> um, and you basically then send the off the answer back, right? And then the uh, Bob basically applies the answer, right? That's basically all it takes to connect two sites. The rest is taken care of for you. Um, maybe just let's go through these functions very quickly. 
uh, from top to bottom, maybe the very top of this mm -hmm. thing is the uh, init local media. You've seen all of this, this media devices get user media, you get your media stream from both, in this case, webcam and microphone in one stream. There are two tracks, audio and video. Uh, you attach it, so you can see it here, right? Mm -hmm. um, then the next one is not this one, I believe, but um, uh, create offer. Create offer. Uh, this one. So in this case, you have the sort of your peer connection, uh, and you basically add, add tracks to this peer connection, right? So you have like audio and video tracks, two tracks from your local stream. You add these tracks, and then you essentially create this description, right? Uh, which I believe just calls, that's the answer, uh, somewhere above create offer description. Uh, offer description. We should have something, yeah, we can. Create on. offer description. There you go. So it just calls essentially create offer, right, on this peer connection. As the synchronous, then we set the description ourselves and we also send it over by signaling. And when the receiver part, uh, essentially um, somewhere down there, sorry for, uh, Actually, the receiver part will subscribe to this event, right? From peer connection, and it receives both the media from the track, right? But as well as some candidates and description. And whenever this answer is there, uh, the offer is there, it can produce an answer, essentially set it and create an answer, right? So kind of a bit more maybe complicated to grasp at, at start, but essentially fairly easy to get a connection going between these two guys. You exchange, your, you send an offer to the one side, uh, send an answer to the other side, apply both on both sides, and then you basically have video flowing, right? So this is actually going through your local network right now. It's not a local computer um, with a peer connection, and it's pretty easy to discover yourself, right, in this case, but uh, yeah. Yeah? It's not that complicated as it may sound, but you know, like if you take a look on the codes without just like being among, among so many developers and like somebody explaining to you, I'm sure it's very easy to grasp. Just need to read it yourself. It's not nothing complicated. Just few fun functions to call. Yeah, we'll share we'll share the GitHub repo yeah. with the presentation if you're interested. There are plenty of libraries out there that help you do this even even better. From you know Twilio, from uh, Talkbox, things like that, which will take care of a lot of that stuff for you as yeah. well. Yeah. So a bit. The history, so we said like, okay, this is cool. Let's play around with it. We'll build something. We did a hack week, September 2017, a couple of years ago by now. That's what the webinar tool we wanted to build looked like in the first, I think, week we spent on hacking. Uh, some people tried, we gave them a link. They tried to join, right? That we had some some connection going, literally with a spear connection and, uh, you know, exchanging, exchanging things through using Firebase. Um, and then I think next slide shows where... Um, you know, where we actually like had the challenge, the actual challenge on this tool, right? So we are essentially, we're fortunate that we can use our existing platform, right? For a lot of these things. So we kind of started streaming into our live servers, which support up to 15,000 participants, I believe is the worst or the best we had so far. Mm. And um, we kind of hooked up this WebRTC thing to it. Um, we had the players already that would kind of played across browser and all, all the browsers and scale to this. We had cloud recording already, which was pretty cool. Feature secret to hook up sort of to these things, right? Still, uh, still pretty challenging if you have customers, you know, who have different browsers, different networking setups, big companies with firewalls, a lot of changes, challenges to overcome there. Uh, we built this tool to test their network conditions. Uh, to see if they actually can stream at all, right? What's the performance going to be like? Um, next slide shows we've built. Uh, it's one of the challenges. I don't know. We have sound. One of the challenges. One of our engineer guys solving. I don't think we have the sound. I just turned on now. Um, essentially, he spent like the whole. You can see the sound is, the video is super delayed, right? It's one of the outcomes um, in one of the network conditions, right? When the network got bad. We got all these kind of problems, which customers didn't really like. And uh, <laughs> like how he was going summer, before basically video clapping, and... right? And uh, <laughs> he was like watching himself clapping. <laughs> uh, and that's what you should do after the talk, by the way. But um, <laughs> it's, you know, there are challenges on doing it in big scale. And that's what we do daily, essentially, right? We've built a pretty sophisticated infrastructure and tested a lot of things on how to make it scale to, um, 
to big things. Everything tried a lot of things from delaying things to, you know, using different servers, running Chrome on headless on the servers, ingests, et cetera. So um, a big, big challenge when you get deeper into it. So here and we go. The... You might see the, what, what it actually became, the tool, right? Just a sneak peek in what looks in real life on production right now. OK. So I guess, Danny, we're going to join. I will send on, you an uh, invitation. You, can you should have one. On, uh, on second cam. It's OK. Yeah, actually join, since there is a part of it is supporting mobile, right? Which WebRTC basically is, is really nicely supported on Safari, for example, on iOS, as well as on Android. So we can uh, actually, I can try to jump on a call. We have this, this is what the tool looks like. Um, we have multiple remote presenters. It's then being streamed to sort of wide audience. But if, uh, if you go to the um, second cam option, which is some feature we've built it's on the HUD here, um, then we basically built like an easy way of joining essentially by typing in a code. I don't need to be registered or anything. Um, so I'll just try The idea to... is here is that you maybe want to, like if you're a presenter like, who is like conducting the whole webinar, then you would like to have a second cam, like a different angle. So when you're like managing your webinar, you can like talk to your front camera, yeah. but you want to have more to have like a, a different angle, like uh, recording somebody else. So then you can join using WebRTC again, like a second cam. And then you have like two active cameras that you can switch between. Like I want this camera to be now shown to everybody. I want the camera from my mobile to be shown to everybody. And, and gosh, we've tried uh, QR codes here. Don't do that in your software. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing, but people couldn't figure out how to use them. They thought they need to install extra software on their phones, which they did, which opened things in a web view, which doesn't support WebRTC. <laughs> uh, but Safari does. So uh, a lot of problems ran into this. We had to remove the QR code. But it's easy enough to type in your your uh, like this number code, right? And I'll just so everybody try to who do knows the now. code at this moment can just so join. Uh, can we join in? Uh, there's one camera actually yeah, limited right now for this particular view. It's m meant to be as a second angle sort of of your uh, your webinar. Let's see if I uh, now come on. Yeah, go. and I'm gonna and switch I'm, now like, to Daniel. Switch. He's a moderator, so he can switch like the different kind of. Let's see. It's you guys. Oh, there you go. It's a bit shaky right now, but, uh, you know. And yeah, the light is poor. That's, I guess that's why it's kind of yeah, not sure. very good quality, but. But you see, you see kind of, you know, I can turn my camera even actually su supports, uh, eventually will support. So that, that goes through WebRTC, kind of using the same technology behind on mobile. Yeah, there you go. So that's how yep. far we've gotten so far. <laughs> yep. Uh, any questions?